go ahead and call. I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, Karen, if you can call the roll. President Furman. Present. Vice President Curry is excused. Alder Bennett. Present. Alder Conklin is excused. Alder Figueroa Cole. Here. Alder Foster is excused. Alder Heck. Here. Ald, um, Alder Abbas. Alder Abbas is excused. You have quorum. Thank you, Karen. Um, uh, we, uh, let's see. So our next order of business will be approval of the minutes. Uh, can I get a motion? Moved by Alder Heck. Can I get a second? Second by Alder Figueroa Cole. Any questions, comments, corrections? Not seeing any, I'll assume approval by unanimous consent. Um, our next item on the agenda would be public comment. We do not have anybody registered for general public comment or um, for public comment on any of the items on the agenda. Um, so we'll continue to go forward. Uh, disclosures and recusals, do any members of the body have any required disclosures or recusals? Not seeing any. Um, our, our next item would be Legislature File 72875, which is a referral from the Common Council for creating 33.01 subsection 12 of the Madison General Ordinance to require recording of open session meetings. Um, we have uh, Director Edgerton with us today uh, to answer any questions. Um, uh, I think uh, it's a very, um, at least a short, minor written um, ordinance change, um, but certainly requires some coordination on the part of IT. Um, I know um, uh, uh, Sarah has spoken to some staff. Sarah, do you want to talk about some of the coordination? I think also a question I would have for you as part of that is when when can we actually um, uh, say this should be implemented? What's a good um, lead up time to, to get this going? Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's nice to see all of you. Um, so, you know, Alder Furman and I talked about it, and then I went back to staff. The The impact is not big on IT. The impact would be, you know, more on city staff just remembering to do the recording and to move it over. So we already have a process in place, and we already have about 50% of our type 2 meetings already doing recordings, just so you know. So we already have about half doing them. Um, and we have a process in place. If the biggest thing is if staff wanted to meet in person and they needed to record, they would either need to have a device, which they would have to purchase. And the ones that we're recommending are about $200 and, or, um, use zoom and they would not really be participating in the, in the in the Zoom meeting room like we are today, they would just have Zoom on and they would be recording. But to do that, they would have to be in one of our um, meeting rooms that have hybrid. And as I'm sure many of you know, because you've heard me say this several times now, <laughs> we only have the city county council chambers room right now with hybrid. We are waiting for our vendor to get the rest of this in place um, and for the hardware to come in. It is incredibly backordered. Um, so we are thinking that if we were to get that in by October, October or November, we could have it up. And I would say, let's just do this starting in January would be my recommendation because everything just seems to be getting pushed back. When we think we're good, something gets pushed back, but that would be if people want to be in person, if it's for just having them do virtual right now, that's already set up and, and ready to go. Does that answer your question, Alder Furman? It does. I'm, I would be fine with a January for the in-person, um, but if there's the use of Zoom, meaning the virtual, um, I th it sounds like immediate implementation is absolutely possible, and that's what I would suggest. Attorney Haas, um, if we were to, um, obviously it's sort of a not written that really, um, we sort of make it kind of loose with the audio and video. Um, is there any way for us to specify a January start date for in-person and uh, immediate for, for virtual? Yeah, certainly we could um, write that into the ordinance with a delayed effective date for, uh, for in-person. Perfect. Um, I have dominated the discussion. Do any members of CCC have any questions, comments, suggestions about this uh, uh, minor, but I think uh, incredibly powerful change? Uh, Alder Heck. 
Thanks. Um, <clears throat> I'm a little bit uneducated on this, I admit, but uh, could in the future, could uh, in-person meetings be audio recordings only? Is that correct? If, if that's the way it played out. Okay, thanks. Alder Hark, that's a good question. So um, the intent of the ordinance change is to, to do that flexibility. We don't. We know that we're not always going to have to. We're, we know we won't always have the media team being able to cover in-person meetings. So um, it's uh, uh, Director Edgerton uh, mentioned that one, um, those committees can get a cassette recorder, a digital cassette recorder, um, and actually just do an audio recording, and, and we would find a way to make that available. Um, or they can actually launch a Zoom and not have any video, but just have audio if they're in a room that has a, a Zoom control um, and that, that would probably be a pretty easy way to get that meeting recorded but um, we know that we're not going to have video coverage of uh, most in-person meetings um, and so we didn't want to uh, make that a barrier um, any any record of our meetings is better than no record so zoom has an audio only recording capability uh, sure think of it as you know like uh, you know a uh, uh, if attorney Haas didn't turn on his, like he doesn't have his video on now and he just talks, it would just be one person in, in the meeting and it would be recorded and it would be that room. So um, okay. it's a single person meeting without video. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? So I think we'd be looking for a motion to say that we would have implementation of this um, uh, upon uh, adoption uh, for, for virtual meetings and then for in-person meetings, um, uh, you know, implementation uh, on, on uh, effective January 1st. Um, can I get somebody to make that motion? Alder Heck and then okay. second, yeah. seconded by Alder Bennett. Um, any other questions, comments, discussions before, um, I assume unanimous consent, unless anybody raises their hand otherwise. That's easy. Thank you so much. I'm going to assume unanimous consent. And um, actually, if there's no objection, I want to very quickly, because I think we could dispense of it pretty quickly, um, go to the council meeting dates. Um, and I think we'll have a little bit longer discussion on, on hybrid. Um, uh, so, uh, let's start item 73032, uh, 2000, uh, 2023 Common Council meeting dates. Um, there's proposed dates. Um, hopefully, people have had an opportunity to see it. I've got some comments from Alder Foster, who suggested as part of the dates, we actually include dates when committee meetings can't happen. And so we actually translate for the, the public uh, and, and, and city staff um, the 2023 list of prohibited dates um, so they don't have to look up and realize that, um, you know, election day is a particular day or, um, you know, any of the other holidays that we're prohibiting. So I think that's the, I think that was a good suggestion from Alder Foster that we just include that when we're adopting this, um, just as an FYI. Um, but does anybody have any thoughts about any of the dates? I know Karen worked really hard with staff to try to figure this out. It's, it's a very complicated puzzle. Alder Figueroa, Cole, go ahead. I, I don't have any input, but I did check all the dates just to verify any special, you know, just a second I am set set of eyes. So didn't find anything jumping, jumping at me there. So great. Thank you. Looks like thumbs up from Alder Heck. Uh Attorney Haas. Hey, so it's just double checking the, the ordinances. Uh chapter 33 currently does not have language about uh, prohibiting meetings on holidays, just on the you know council budget days and elections. So um, so the, the the dates are more for committees then. The, well, the holidays, I think the, the those holiday blackout dates were for the council. I don't think there's anything currently in the ordinances that prohibit BCCs from meeting on those dates designated by the council for its own meeting. Oh, interesting. Okay, um, interesting. So, um, you're, what you're saying is, if a committee wanted to meet on the same day as council, they can, which, which, which I'm fine. Which, no, which is I, fine. I was referring to the holidays. I thought I thought you said you were going to publish a yeah. schedule of holidays that committees could not meet. Correct, and so we. So if if I'm correct, there there we do have prohibited days that the committees can't meet and the council can't meet. Right? We we modified there's a, that. There's a list of not exactly 
official holidays, but a list of dates that we cannot have a meeting. I think that's what he's mean. He means. Well, and currently, I mean, the the council adopted that for its own schedule. Right, but this is our own schedule that we're talking about, right? Right, but right. I and maybe I misunderstood, but I thought the suggestion was to publish a date or a list of dates that committees should not meet, which included holidays. Was that is that correct or not? Am I misunderstanding? Um, I, I took it as it as, as so, so, so hang on. So so, so 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 hold on, Alder Figueroa Cole, please. Um so so to be clear, if if I read if I read the ordinance, which I'm gonna read out loud, um the Common Council should not meet on the following holidays. And then it lists, you know, a long list of holidays, which I won't go through. Um, and it says uh, other holidays designated by the Common Council in any general or primary election day for local, state, or national offices or referendum following adoption of the annual schedule for the Common Council meeting and the designation of dates upon which meetings shall not be held. The city uh, uh, clerk shall communicate such dates to the Common Council office and staff of all subunits. And so you're saying that only prohibits the common council from meeting, not actual individual committees? Well, uh, I was actually looking at the language in chapter 33. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, what section is that? Okay, I'm in, then thank you, uh, Claire, for that for everybody listening and paying attention. Um, 2.01 meetings, uh, subsection four. So chapter two, 2.01 meetings. Yeah, I mean, what you read, uh, Technically, it doesn't. It doesn't. It sounds like maybe it's implied, but not clearly prohibited. But let me just take a look at that. Two point zero one sub four. Okay. Communicate dates to the office and staff of all subunits. Yeah, that's not great language. So um, I, I think maybe, we ignore maybe that exchange. It, maybe, yeah, maybe it's been understood that way. So I, I don't want to create an issue. Yeah, I think it's been understood that way. I, I think we should include those dates as part of our calendar just to let people know. And then I think it's a very easy tweak of that to make it in, incredibly clear that we don't do that. Yeah, And also, I, I think you could maybe read chapter 33, which says, you know, BCCs are subject to the rules of the council and unless they make their own rules i mean maybe to incorporate that requirement so sorry for the diversion no that's that's good we just found uh, a rare hole in our ordinances <laughs> so i think i think we're all fine with the calendar there's some some confusion which we'll clear up about the uh, the holiday days. Um, I think it's been generally understood that people don't meet during those days, and that's been generally respected. So we should probably continue that tradition. There's, uh, you know, good public policy reasons for not meeting on uh, on Yom Kippur, or Rosh Hashanah, or Christmas Day, et cetera. So, okay. Um, so, Karen, do you have what you need? Obviously, this was just a discussion item, but I think we've got another task that I'll, I'll make sure that ordinance gets cleaned up and. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just include those dates and map them so people um, can have one place to look at for those those 2013 holidays, uh, 2023 um, holidays. Thank you. Okay, um, so we'll jump back. Um, uh, so uh, any other discussion, thoughts on this uh, topic, which uh, we spent longer on than I expected, but that was good. All right, uh, let's jump back to uh, 71798. What is hybrid? Um, obviously, as a council, we have met a few times. Um, in hybrid format and uh, wanted to um, I very loosely start talking about um, hybrid for committees. Um, our committee system is set up um, of uh, type one and type two, um, so we can start there. Um, but I think uh, generally the thought is that um, type one committees, um, which right now I can pull up the list and I'm gonna share it, um, uh, type uh, one committees could start meeting hybrid if they wish. Um, and so that's a, a very small list. And then type two meetings, we do not have the city facilities and or policies in place 
um, to allow uh, them to to meet. Um, I'm going to turn it over to, to Director Edgerton, who I'm sure is going to have a lot more to say about this. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, so just to, I, I do want to do one quick level set with the type one meetings. As I noted before, we only have one space where we can do hybrid type one. And um, so, yes, we can do it. And we are going to be doing the finance meetings in um, for budget in September as uh, hybrid meetings. Um, but for the other ones, we have to make sure that we can accommodate them all in that space and that there's not any overlap with the county that also we have to share that space with. So I just want to make that as one note there when we're thinking about that. That, that's that's incredibly helpful. I, I appreciate that clarification. I think um, I, while 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 we have your attention, um, do you want to talk about when you think rooms might be available um, for more? Well, that goes back to we're really saying January because we are at the mercy of our vendor. We are at the mercy of of when they're going to be able to get in and get um, the hardware in and um, to get. Uh, the equipment that needs to be there. Processes are clearly in place. We have everything set up. It's just the hardware that we, and it's not just getting it in, then we have to test it. We have to test it quite a bit. Okay, that's helpful. I appreciate that. That gives mm -hmm. us some, some sort of place to look. Um, as committees are wrapping up their year, they can start talking about that. Um, so I'm sharing on the screen so everybody can understand what this type one um, list is. As you can see, it's a very small list of um, committees um, that um, can uh, that are considered type one and and could use CCB 201 very heavily uh, depending on staff schedule as well as room availability um, and you know, obviously we couldn't have multiple meetings at one time. Um, I, I you know I, I think just to get this continue this conversation and get people to start thinking about the purpose of why we're talking about this right now is we, we spent a lot of time, I'm gonna go ahead and close this so um, we could all see each other better. Um, we spent a lot, a lot of time talking about whether or not we were going to establish policies for um, the common council meeting, um, everything from quorum to um, you know, other other you know notification requirements, et cetera, and, and ultimately decided that we, we weren't going to set strict rules. We were going to see how things played out. And so I think as we're shifting to look at um, having more groups meet, more committees meet, um, what is it that we'd like to either suggest to those committees to think about? And are there any policies very specifically that we would like to, to, to make clear to those committees that if they, if they meet hybrid, here are the things you absolutely have to do, or here are the quorum numbers you need, et cetera. And so um, you know, thoughts, I think, I think we should at the very least, um, give those committees stuff to think about. Um, you know, so I don't know how many people in this group before it was mentioned to me by others, um, uh, city staff thought about the idea of just, you know, one person sitting in the room and how problematic that could be, um, for committee function, for, for, um, public interaction, et cetera. Um, so, you know, obviously for me, one of the things I'll throw out to get the conversation going is quorum. Um, whether or not you'd have a uh, in-person quorum in order to have a meeting, um, you know, I think I think that's up to committees to decide. But I think that's obviously something that they should talk about. Do people have any other thoughts? Uh, you know, and obviously I know we have members here that are part of some of these Type One committees on on what advice we should be giving um, committees as they try to make these decisions. I'll do figure a call. To me, the keyword is advice, so we can. We can share we have our experiences with them, but I don't think that we need to be dictating what the committees do among themselves. But we have already been learning. We should capture what we have learned, what has worked for us, what hasn't worked, and share that with them. Perfect. So I appreciate that. So so I think yeah. Or you you definitely think advice is a good idea, and then you know best practices that we've already learned, and here are the considerations. Um, any thoughts about frequency, frequency suggestions? Um, I know at some point there were suggestions on committees maybe, you know, being asked to consider meeting hybrid, you know, uh, once a year or quarterly or every two, you know, twice a year. Is that also just, you know, another suggestion that we should be giving committees, you know, think about, you know, doing this every so often or something bigger? 
Alder Heck, go ahead. I guess I feel like we shouldn't try to steer them too much, let them make their own decisions based on their experiences. Um, I do have a thought about hybrid meetings in general, even for just those type one committees <clears throat> based on, you know, what we've learned at common council. I, I mostly what staff has learned, I think, um, but, you know, in, in CCB 201, uh, you know, for instance, for plan commission, it would require, uh, the chair running the meeting and kind of in the way the mayor does the common council meeting with help from staff. That's the way it used to be in CCB 201, but um, would type one meetings that aren't in 201, uh, I mean, is, is, the, is there gonna be a panel like there is in, 201 in the other room that we set up for type one. And I'm just worried that chairs could get overwhelmed, I guess, with their duties in, in hybrid meetings. Uh, some of them, uh, I guess that's something we just have to conquer, but I, I worry it could be pretty confusing without as much staff available to help, but maybe that's part of hybrid meetings. There has to be more staff. Yeah, um, uh, Director Edgerton, do you want to talk a little about what what a typical hybrid, uh, you know, non two hundred one room would look like? And I know you guys have had talked about um, staff requirements, um, you know, for for I guess both would be type one and, and type two meetings. Uh, yes, I'd be happy to. And Alderheck is is completely correct, but it it is going to be more difficult. Um, we are recommending that there's an additional staff member for hybrid meetings. Um, and it's two part. One is helping with the registration at the beginning. And if you, I don't know if you've noticed that there's always a second clerk, city clerk that's there helping those who may um, wanna speak in person and getting them registered. So that's something else that we would uh, need to address is that we need to have that second person to help with that because that first person is gonna be helping the chair to get the meeting set up and to do everything. So type one meetings will still be, um, it will still be the media team that will be covering it, but they, you know, they do the directing and not as much of the technical facilitation of that. And that really does come to having that second staff person to help with where is that person? Is it in, per, you know, where is the registrant? Are they in person or are they on the hybrid meeting? And so you can see how that can get to be rather complicated after a while. In the rooms that are not 201 um, city county, so, and I apologize, I think it's uh, transportation are the, the ones mainly that are not in 201 because I know that ALRC is and planning is. Um, I really don't know where they meet. I think they probably meet down on like 153, but they will have a control panel and they're going to have to help, you know, with that. And so it will be a little bit different. It's not the same where they have, um, where they turn mics on and off. And so we're going to have to figure out that piece of it. So there will be a little bit of a process piece there. Um, but because it is a smaller room, it has a different impact on that piece of it of like turning on a mic and turning off a mic. So that should be um, in some ways easier to run, but we are really thinking about that registration piece. And then just the fact that there are like these two worlds that they're, they're balancing. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that kind of makes me circle back to my original statement about not dictating too much what committees have to do or, but I, I also, I mean, for the sake of staff's planning, committees have really got to commit to what they're going to do early on, I, I would think, and try not to, I mean, and we already give them advice to try not to switch back and forth and, you know, have it, have it be structured. And I would reiterate that and try to say, you know, try to plan this out six months in advance and at least so staff can figure out their commitments. That's it. Appreciate that, Alder Heck. Uh, Alder Bennett. 
Well, all the heck said what I wanted to say, but I don't know. So I don't have much to add to the conversation other than I I agree with what all the heck said. I don't think we should provide too much direction outside of like have a have this conversation early and let stuff know like as soon as possible what we plan on what we intend on doing. So that's what I have. Appreciate that, Alderman. I think what you know the the thing that I you know sort of is right in that alley is making it also clear. I mean, that's not this is being hybrid is not a decision that somebody could make the day before or the day of. Um, and so I think that's part of that planning. You know, that requires a lot of coordination. Um, Alder Figueroa, call. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm here. Um, Sarah, so um, can you elaborate on how is it going thus far with the? rules that you guys established at the beginning for changing between virtual to in person and you know how we you guys gave us some deadlines that we need to follow how is that working out for you well i have to say that we really haven't seen type one switching to in person they pretty much are staying the the course of of remaining virtual except for city or except for the common council meeting and that one we knew about, so that's been going well. Um, you know, it's, I, uh, we need to have just for staffing and, you know, I wanna be very considerate to them. It, it It's two weeks in advance really, because they need to um, figure out their schedules. And so the schedules are always two weeks in advance of who's gonna be covering those meetings. And then they have to leave a little bit of space for things like, you know, all of the project work that they have. So not a little bit of space, but quite a bit of space. And then also things like impromptu press conferences or something like that that occurs. So they have to think about that. And, and we're trying to be very thoughtful about not having too much overtime for them. You know, number one for them in their work-life balance and number two for our budget. So we're thinking about that. So we, we asked for two weeks of a notice if they're going to have to flip flop back and forth, which we know is difficult when like there's a winter weather, you know, like there's a storm or something like that. But it is for us to switch um, from virtual to hybrid. It's more staffing for us in that hybrid than it is for us to be in virtual. So we're more agile the other way. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I you know the committees that I've been, they have, they have, we have, we all try to give you mo way more than two weeks. Like it seems like everybody's very. Um, again, we may want to meet quarterly, so then we schedule that three months ahead. So again, totally agreeing with uh, with Patrick. Whatever um, that decision between the the committee has to include the staff information and provide those guidelines from the staff perspective. I think I think things are working pretty well thus far, and it shouldn't be big of a change. So, thank you. Thank you, all the figure out call. I'm wondering, you know, I do, I, I, you know, the the advice thing I think has worked out well with the Common Council. I'm wondering if any of the timing stuff should be codified, or we should be thinking about that only in the sense of like, you know, making it clear that people can't really be making. Um, decisions the day before um, or, you know, the week before. It's not the same as the agenda. Coordinating whether or not you're going to be virtual or in person, I think probably should require um, a certain amount of notice to the public. Um, I, may, maybe something for people to think about. We don't certainly not have to make a decision today, but I'm leaning towards the idea of not making that as loose as, you know, just, just do what makes sense for the committee. Um, I think that's probably a public um, um, thing that might make sense to be a little bit better about Alder Heck. Thanks. Don't we have an ordinance? We do have a carve out for council due to inclement weather or something. And uh, that is a situation where our plans would sort of go out the window, I suppose, if we went to may maybe going to virtual from in person is easier. And that there could be more, and that's that's what that ordinance allows. It's to be all virtual, I think, uh, potentially. Uh, 
maybe we could think about doing that for committees only in emergencies too, that, you know, to provide some flexibility for them too. So that if, if you want to be in person, that would be more difficult, but to switch to virtual, certainly not at the last minute, if at all possible, but to make that slightly easier. Uh, I mean, currently can committees switch to virtual if there's a snowstorm or something, if, if we were having hybrid meetings? Uh, Nobody's doing it. I mean, you know, everybody's virtual, so it's, it's hard yeah. to... I mean, if we are gonna we are gonna have hybrid meetings. I would think that having that capability in emergencies to switch to virtual would, would be good, but not the other way around necessarily. Yeah, I, I wonder. I wonder if we should be worried about somebody, you know, not knowing that the meeting got changed to just virtual, and they show up at CCB, and then there's a, a scramble to go. Well, I wanted to participate in that meeting, and now I can't um, because I don't have my computer, um, and you know, I'm running home. Um, but you know, that committee made the decision. I think the snow thing is easy. Um, but I think, you know, um, we may be trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist yet. And we might want to wait and see that problem ha happens, but may maybe noting to people like this is, this is a big deal when you decide that location. Yes. You know, whether, whether aside, um, you know, you guys sh shouldn't be setting yourself up to change to just virtual and inconvenience people. I mean, these are exercises that people may not be thinking about unless we're prompting them to think about it. So. Um, I think maybe that's just a, a good advice thing for now. Yeah, I agree. Thanks. Any other thoughts on advice to be giving um, uh, committees as they're trying to figure this out? Well, I like rules, but I do think uh, starting with advice for now is 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 good and appreciate everybody's input. Um, so if we don't have anything else on this item, the only other item we have left on our agenda um, would be an update from um, the council office. Um, Karen, I know you sent that out shortly before the meeting. Um, so that's, I'm not sure if people got a chance to see that. Do you wanna just go over that quickly? Absolutely. So um, we are doing well with our new legislative administrative assistant who started on the first. So we are making progress in staffing. I'm very excited. She has some um, She's going to be undergoing a lot of onboarding, and um, as she's doing that, she's also documenting workflows and um, processes, so I'm very, very, very excited about all that. Um, I am, let's see where we are here. Uh, we are interviewing now for the legislative analyst position, and so um, that's well underway. Uh, the community engagement position, HR, is, I believe, planning on posting tomorrow. Um, so that's also good. We're making progress all around on staffing. Um, just a reminder, Debbie is onboarding Liz as well as um, coordinating neighborhood meetings, the three-week uh, recommended uh, amount of time to get that neighborhood meeting information to Debbie makes it uh, more likely that we can assist effectively considering some things are time sensitive. Um, yep, we're having a council get together. There's gonna be information coming out about how to pay and signing up to bring items. Um, I am finalizing dates for de-escalation and active shooter training. So when doodles come through, please, just if you don't mind taking a couple minutes to fill those out for me, that helps me immensely. And uh, just a quick update on the Civilian Oversight Board that finalists have been selected will be announced in the upcoming days. And to put on your calendars, there's going to be a virtual candidate forum at 5 p.m. on August 18th. So um, with the finalists. Fantastic. I do want to note for anybody watching this and for the members that are here as well that the um, council um, event, um, just to get together, is a potluck. Um, and when we say pay, um, we rented a um, park pavilion. And so it's probably something like $10 an altar, some very, very uh, small thing. But people are just going to be asked to bring stuff. And it's uh, a no policy get together, just social event for us to. Um, you know, see each other in person and um, see our families, that type of thing. So um, not, nothing, nothing big. Uh, Alder Figueroa call. 
Thank you, Karen. I don't know if I asked if I had asked this before or if I thought about it, but I didn't bring it up. So for Debbie's um, timeline on for requests, did we put a list together of what are the things that we're supposed to be requesting? Like, um, I remember my first experience, I didn't know I needed to also get um, interpreters in there, even though that was at the last minute, they helped me out with that, but I didn't know exactly what I was supposed to be asking. Yes, that sounds good. I think um, so I'm making a note here to ask Debbie to send out um, a list. The thing is, that it's really very context dependent as well. Some folks send postcards, some folks don't send postcards, you know. Um, so some folks need interpreters, some folks don't need interpreters. So I'll I'll work with her to get a list together of things that um, start the ball rolling and okay. uh, send it out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alder Figueroa Cole, Alder Heck. Thank you. Uh, Karen, um, could I assume that at some point in the future, um, we that Alders might get an email that says, okay, when you have questions about Legistar stuff, we should now go to our new person and that she'll be a resource. But I, I realize she's got to get trained and get, get comfortable in everything. But is that something you can anticipate would, would, would come out in the future. Yeah, I think that that's a really good point. Um, once we have our full, our fully staffed office, we'll be able to provide more guidance on who to reach out to for what tasks or you know this sort of thing. Because right now we're not we're not there yet, but yeah, I think we will be there um, hopefully by the end of the year. Yeah, that, that, I didn't mean to apply pressure. I was just wondering if that would be something we might see eventually. Yeah, I think that's okay. a wonderful idea. And some guidelines about things to to know as you're requesting X or contacting about Y and so on and so forth. But of course, we also, um, you know, we have our own purviews and then we have, we know that we also need to be cross-trained and be able to um, assist each other as needed as well. So it wouldn't be a very sort of only this person and you know what I mean? It'll be... It, it, but it'll give you some guidelines so that you'll know who the first point of contact would be for different projects. So right. absolutely. And I want to participate in empowering our new staff too. So that's another reason for asking. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Hacker. Karen, I assume in the meantime, um, stat, like, you know, if I contact Debbie for something and it's supposed to be Liz, Debbie will probably point us and say, go, go there instead. Perfect. Yep. Thumbs up acknowledgement. Okay. Um, any other questions for Karen about that update? Fantastic. Our, uh, so I, I may have said that was our last item, but it's not. We do have the future agenda item that we talk about. Um, I don't have anything to share for uh, what our, will be on our agenda for next meeting. There's still a lot of things hanging out there. Um, I'm hoping actually for, for our next meeting. Okay. Hi, folks. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. But it sounds like we did lose Juliana. I, I'm, I'm She's positive. Here. Sorry, my computer died. Oh, no problem. So we both uh, we had a technical issue at the same time. Um, I uh, uh, apologize. My Wi-Fi uh, went out, um, but uh, I, I'm obviously calling in. Um, I, I was. I don't know how much where I got cut off, but I said that we. Um, I did not have anything to talk about for our next agenda, uh, but we do have a lot of outstanding topics. Um, um, by our next meeting, I'm hoping to actually have um, the rest of the year, um, a proposal for the rest of the year planned out so we could have a little bit more um, visibility on our topics and when we're going to um, be ready to discuss that. But I did want to ask if any people had any suggestions on um, anything for our next meeting. Um, and then certainly at our next meeting, we could talk about you know some of the suggestions for the other meetings um, or, you know, based on the proposal I will have for that. Um, I can't see hands, so if people just want to unmute themselves if they have any any suggestions for our next meeting. We there's certainly plenty of topics, so we will we will have topics for our next meeting. But I just don't have that set right now. I think if I had like a list in front of. Yeah. Sounds like Alder Bennett's still having some issues. Can you not hear me? 
Now we can. We can hear you now. Now we can. Oh, okay. Um, I just said that if I had a list in front of me, that would be helpful. I don't know. Right now, I just like I'm completely blanking, but I'm I know there's things <laughs> like I think we should talk about, but I, I I'm blanking. I'm like off the top of my head. Well, they're better. There's no, there's nothing that's standing out for you that that you definitely want to see at our next meeting, though, right? That you can think of. And if there is, you can certainly contact me um, before the agenda is finalized, um, and we can add that. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, I do have video back at least to uh, possibly end the meeting. Um, and but before I do that, any other thoughts on the on the future agenda? All right, um, I entertain a motion. Moved. Motion to adjourn. Uh, seeing no objection, uh, have a good night. Thank you for, for uh, uh, dealing with all the technical issues tonight, folks, and appreciate the discussion. Have a good night.